Hello and welcome to the Music Theory Guy clinic with me, Music Theory Guy. If you've got a question about music theory, this is the place to get it answered. If you'd like to get in touch, you can send me an email or you can contact me via Facebook or Twitter. Now that's precisely what Noel from Melbourne in Australia has done. He's written to me and he wants to know about serialism. Specifically, he wants to know how to calculate the different types of tone rows. So I've put together a couple of videos. This is part one. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining how to calculate the prime and retrograde rows. Let's have a look. OK, so before we have a look at tone rows themselves, let's just clarify what we mean by 12 tone technique. The 12 tones refers to the number of different pitches or notes in an octave. So here on screen are some notes and it's an octave and you can see that there are seven notes. Now, of course, some of you at this point are going to say, well, hang on, there are eight notes in an octave. And you're absolutely right. The eighth note in this case, there'd be an A at the end. But remember, I'm referring to different pitches or notes. Because they're two A's, we're not going to include that second A because that'd be the same note. So we need to think of 12 tone technique using different pitches. Now, of course, these notes, they're just the white notes from a keyboard. We also have to include the black notes. So if we include those in our list of pitches on screen, we can see that there are 12 different pitches in an octave. And that's where that 12 tone technique phrase comes from. In fact, this series of 12 tones is rather important. It's what we call a chromatic scale because those 12 different pitches are in order. In other words, they're stepwise. So you've got the A at the beginning, then it goes to the next note on the keyboard, then the next note on the keyboard. It's what we call a chromatic scale. Now, I do have a video available about chromatic scales. So if you're interested, do go and have a look at that video. But what I'm going to do for the moment, I'm just going to muddle up this order of 12 different pitches and I'm going to put them at the bottom of the screen. So you can see this time we've still got 12 different pitches, but they're in a completely different order. It's no longer a chromatic scale. In fact, because we've got 12 different pitches in a seemingly random order, this is what we would call the prime order or P0 in 12 tone technique or serialism. Let's have a listen to these 12 notes in order. Now, I appreciate that's not the most exciting or memorable melody, but of course, I'm just playing all of the notes at exactly the same rhythm. Let's change the rhythm slightly. Let's have another listen. OK, again, still not the most memorable melody, but you get the idea. We've got this random order of 12 different pitches and we can then change the rhythms that we're using in any music that we're composing using this prime order. Now, of course, we don't have to just stick with that prime order. We can create other rows from it. But before we do, I'm just going to make a small little change. All of the black notes, which I've just highlighted green, I'm going to turn them into sharp. So the G flat and F sharp at number two, I'm going to turn them into an F sharp. Now, there's no real reason for this. I could turn them into flats or I could have turned some into sharps and some into flats. It's just for ease of reference for the rest of this video. So as I've already said, this row of different pitches is called the prime order or P0. Let's have a quick look at what that P and the zero represent. So the P itself, the letter, that refers to the type of row. Now, in serialism, there are four different letters that you can have. P refers to prime. And as you know, we've already got this prime order on the screen. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. But I'll come back to that in a moment. The letter could be an I for inversion, R for retrograde, which is a seemingly fancy word for backwards, and RI, which means retrograde inversion. Whereas the number, that refers to the row transposition. Now, transposition or transposing is a musician's term for moving notes up or down. So let's have a look at what happens if we change that number. This time, let's have a look at P1. All that means is move all of P0, the prime order, up by one semitone or one half step. P2 would mean move all of P0 up by 
two semitones or two half steps. P3 would mean move all of P0 up by three semitones or three half steps and so on and so on. Let's have a look at P1 for the moment. So I'll just pop P1 over here. Now the first note of the prime order P0 is a C. So we use that to work out the first note of P1. So here's my keyboard and here's the C and all I've got to do is go up one semitone or one half step and remember the reason it's one is because it's P1. So we go up one step and we get to C sharp or D flat. Now as I'm using sharps in my tone rows it's C sharp. The second note of P1 is based on the second note of the prime order or P0. So we find F sharp on our keyboard and we go up one semitone or one half step and it takes us to the G. So G is the second note of P1. And here is the rest of P1. All I've done is just move every single note from the prime order up by one semitone or one half step. Let's quickly have a look at P5. So the first note of P5 is based on the first note of P0. And we take that first note of P0, which is the C, and we move up by five semitones or five half steps because this is P5. So let's count up on the keyboard. One, two, three, four, five. So that takes us to the F. So the first note of P5 is an F. To work out the second note, we base it on the second note of P0, which is the F sharp. So we find F sharp on our keyboard and we go up five semitones or five half steps. So one, two, three, four, five brings us to the B. So the second note of P5 is a B. And here's the rest of P5. All of those notes are just based on notes from P0 and they've all been moved or transposed up by five semitones or five half steps. So just remember that the number next to the row letter, that just refers to the row transposition or how many semitones or half steps the prime order's got to be changed to get to that particular row. So if we looked at P11, all we do is take P0 and move all of the notes up by 11 semitones or 11 half steps. Okay, so let's now have a look at retrograde rows. Retrograde rows use that letter R, and as I've already said, retrograde is another way of saying backwards. So R0, all that is, is P0 backwards. R1 is just P1 backwards. R5 would be P5 backwards. So let's have a look at R0, and as I say, all it is is P0 backwards. So I'm just going to pop R0 at the end of our row over here. And we can see that the first note of R0 is a G sharp. Now remember, that's the 12th note of the prime order. Whereas the ninth note of R0 is a B, the B is actually the fourth note of the prime order. So just make sure you don't get confused which row that you're referring to. But retrograde just means backwards of the row that you've been looking at. So let's have a look at R1. All that is, is P1 backwards. So the first note of R1 is an A, whereas the A is the 12th note of P1. R5, so we now know that R5 is just P5 backwards. But imagine you've been asked to work out R9. The way to work this out is to work out P9 first, and by having the completed row of P9, you can then work out what R9 is. So the first note of R9 in this case would be an F. OK, well, I hope that's been useful to you, Noel, and anybody else that's been watching. Remember, if any of you have any questions about music theory, please do drop me an email or contact me via Facebook or Twitter. In the meantime, many thanks for watching. Music theory, this is the place to get it answered. Now that's precisely, ah, oh, he hasn't done anything yet. Ah. A couple of videos to explain this, explain this, explain this. What's up, Dag? Noel from Melbourne in Australia done. He did, done, did, done. Don, don, don.